Serious doctors of Reddit, what is the rarest disease that you've encountered in your career? Rare and interesting would be Pentalogy of Cantrell which has the heart outside of the chest because the sternum has not fused. I'd seen it before with just a bit of the heart on view, but with this kit it was completely out, you could see pretty much the whole heart with the aorta and lung vessels all that was holding it, the heart just beating away. I'd done adult cardiac for a bit but this was a little different. Tiny. We covered it with a polystyrene cup, until the kid went or theater to have it pushed back inside. It's meant to be 1 colon 65 comma 000 live births. I saw a 9 year old with something like that. She was born somewhere that had pretty bad healthcare options, so it was basically her family winning the lottery to get packed up and shipped to somewhere they could do the surgery. There's a short video out there of this little girl, clearly pre-op and being prepared for it and she's calm, no distress. Wearing a partially open hospital gown. You can see her heart beating in front of her ribs. She was skinny too, so it was especially noticeable. Then she coughs and I almost fainted because it noticeably caused a major shape slash size difference in her heart. She was fine though, it just looked distressing. Numchin syndrome. I was just a third year med student shadowing the respiratory team at a small suburban hospital. RESP were post take, which meant that any medical patients that came into hospital over the weekend were their responsibility until they could be referred to a more appropriate specialty. Massive list of random people to see, ward round was going to take all day. In turn says there's a guy who stayed in A&E overnight with jaw pain, why does he need to be in hospital? So I get sent to go do a basic assessment in the hope that we can discharge him before it gets late. When I found him he looked fine, just sitting on the edge of a trolley. Turns out he was in his garden the previous day when he suddenly felt a really sharp burning pain in his chin. He specifically said it was on the left side of his chin, and he initially assumed he had been stung by a bee or something. But there was absolutely no redness or swelling to be seen, and after a couple of hours the burning feeling turned to pins and needles, and now he couldn't feel anything at all. I hadn't a clue what was going on, so I just went through the motions of taking a full history, he felt completely well except for this numb chin. Being a student, I got my tendon hammer out and subjected this poor guy to a whole neurological exam, everything was normal except for numbness which was entirely isolated to the left side of the chin. My priority at the time was not looking like an idiot when I went back to present my findings to the intern, so I came up with some bullshit about how each side of the chin is supplied by the mental nerve, an unimportant branch that runs through the jawbone and pokes out of a hole to supply the skin just over your chin. The stressed out intern rolled their eyes at my esoteric anatomy lesson and told me to try come up with some diagnosis so we don't both look hopeless in front of the boss. I literally google, numb chin syndrome, on my phone, I was surprised to find it was actually a thing, but the only search results are random case reports from decades ago. The main cause seemed to be idiopathic, i.e., we don't have a clue either, but there was one or two cases where the patients happened to have leukemia. I mentioned this to the intern in a vain attempt to claw back some brownie points, but I didn't expect them to stop and look at me. It turns out that the guy's only past medical history was that they had had leukemia years ago, and had been in remission for so long that they hadn't even mentioned it to me. TL, DR, so it turns out the numchin was a really rare sign that their cancer was coming back, and had deposited in the narrow bony canal where the nerve to their chin lives. The patient ended up staying in hospital, was reviewed by a neurologist, and then referred to oncology to restart chemo a few days later. I've been a doctor for a few years now and I still don't think I've ever made a reveal that tops that. I'm a posse, not MD slash do. I work in psychiatry. Had a patient who came to me with worsened depression slash anxiety slash insomnia starting four months previous, in part related to recent increase in environmental stressors. Started them on an antidepressant, they responded well, even started eating healthier, exercising on a regular basis, stopped smoking. They no show a follow up. We get an automatic refill request from the pharmacy a few weeks later, call and get them rescheduled. My patient makes it to that appointment, sits down and says I have to be honest, I don't remember you, or why I was coming here. I can't remember the last six months. They ended up in the ER acutely ill, fever, confusion, pain later they were diagnosed with aseptic meningitis which had injured the brain, resulting in an amnesiac episode. 
This patient had seen several specialists, including neurology, infectious disease, immunology, and most had come to the conclusion the antidepressant had been the trigger for the meningitis. At the time there were two documented cases of a similar nature. The patient ended up becoming a case study. Upside they were no longer depressed or anxious downside, they were back to smoking and having a less healthy lifestyle. We had a patient once, a young girl, who was so sick that it broke our data analysis pipeline. When the code ingested a genome sequencing sample, it attempted to detect the chromosomal of the patient. It was using two metrics, the sample was considered female if it, 1, lacked Y chromosome, and, 2, was heterozygous on X chromosome, implying there were two copies of it. Otherwise the sample was considered male. This one sample registered as female on metric 1, no Y chromosome, but male on metric 2, very little heterozygosity on X chromosome, which was not anticipated and resulted in our pipeline crashing. Upon investigation, it turned out that the parents of that poor girl were brother and sister to each other. As a result, she had very little genetic variation throughout her genome, not just X chromosome, and was consequently very sick, with a plethora of diseases typical for consanguineous births. Fetus in fetu. 10-year-old boy pregnant with his parasitic twin, PT. Edit, case 10 yo boy came in with enlarging abdominal mass and intermittent generalized weakness. Imaging revealed a parasitic fetus which was also growing in size. History revealed mass noted two years ago which enlarged rapidly the last three to four months. Within days of admission, boy's organs begin to fail with no apparent reason. He was healthy and eating well when he was admitted. Family wanted surgical intervention to separate the parasitic twin against surgeon's advice. Parasitic twin was basically starving slash poisoning the boy to death. Surgeons opened the boy up and found that the boy and parasitic twin share a stomach, liver, heart, blood vessels, mesodermal organs, basically too complex to operate. The boy passed away after. This happened to a poor family in an underfunded government hospital in a corruption infested country. The parasitic twin was donated to the hospital. It had teeth with hairy limbs with the longest curved baby nails. I can't describe it further. It is on display at the surgeon's hall. Edit 2 This happened years ago before the age of smartphones. The hospital team tried to have the tissues studied for academic purposes. There was a case report about it presented in a local medical congress but as this happened in a third world country with limited resources, nothing came of it. I live and work in a different country now. Last edit, NSFW if you want to google it. You slash transcendence will correct me but long story short, IIRC. One of the reasons having twins isn't more common, is because when we're a very small amount of cells, we kinda absorb our twin. This doesn't go anywhere beyond that because they basically disintegrate. A step above that is chimerism, where both grow in harmony as kind of one being, different cells, different DNA, different characteristics, but they work together. But then there is when the would-be fetus just kinda, stays there, inside, growing from your bloodstream slowly but surely like a self-contained, malformed tumor of nails teeth bones and hair. Edit, after so many people trying to point out it was not a twin. I decided to hunt for the name of the documentary that I watched when I was 8, since I could be very wrong on the descriptions, but nope, the fetus was even trying to make limbs, tumors don't tend to do that on their own a fake. I couldn't find a name of the documentary, but it was on the Discovery Channel, the name of the boy was Alamjan Nimatilayev, they even cut it in half to explain it. Oh right, if this is freaking you out then you might not want to check Craniopagus Parasiticus. I remember reading a news article where a mom gave birth but her blood work or DNA did not match her baby. CPS was somehow involved and IIRC a nurse suggested drawing blood in different parts of her body as a hunch. Sure enough blood in her uterus area had different DNA, she was a chimera where her womb has totally different cell and DNA mapping than hers. I believe they had a witness for the birth of the child she was pregnant with when the CPS issues started. It started because DNA showed she was really the kid's aunt and not their mother. They DNA tested the newborn and got the same result and then they realized she was a chimera with her ovaries and uterus being what was left of her twin sister.